Welcome into Casual Throw. I got a bit of a treat for you today, and that is the very first review of the prototype of the Saboteur, which will be the inaugural release from Guy with a Yo-Yo. So as you can see, this Yo-Yo is uh, organic shaped. It's made out of 6061 aluminum. It has a really nice mid-size profile, and it does lean a little bit on the wide side. We'll get to the specs in a little bit. You can see that it does have a bit of a high wall design, although, especially when I uh, show you the guts later, you'll see that there is a smooth groove in there to reduce uh, contact between the string and the wall of the yo-yo. So on to the specs. The diameter is 55 and a half millimeters. The width is 45 and a half millimeters. Just for the sake of size comparison, I have the Saboteur here on the right with the H-Spin IOYO Pyro X on the left. And you can see the diameter is very, very close. Uh, the Saboteur is just a little bit bigger in that regard. And when it comes to the width, it's pretty much the same story. They're very close, but the Saboteur is just a tiny bit, just a hair wider. The gap on the prototype is 4.47 millimeters, but that's going to be reduced to 4.4 for the production run. The weight is 66 grams and he's gonna shave a one gram off, make it 65 for the production run. The bearing is a large C center track, centering bearing, and the response is also fairly standard at 19 millimeter slim silicone pads. The axle is 10 millimeters for this uh, prototype and it's gonna be extended out to 12 millimeters for the production model. As I've suggested, I really like this design. I've played it a lot over the last week or so, and I've really fallen in love with it. It, as an organic, has that comfortable feeling. It certainly has that fun factor, but it also plays really, really well. It does have a little bit of a classic feel because of the higher walls, uh, but the smooth groove does help to mitigate against some of the potential uh, pitfalls of the higher walls, such as the string rubbing against the sides there and prematurely slowing down the spin of the yo-yo. Uh, but there are certainly times where if you're playing sloppy or whatever, that higher wall design will still lead to some tilting, instability, or whatnot. But, you know, that's somebody like me that is super sloppy in play. And if you're, uh, you know, careful, you can mitigate that. The throw is almost perfectly smooth with maybe the tiniest touch of fingernail vibe, but certainly nothing at all that I can feel on this string. One of the things that I did notice it uh, when I took the yo-yo apart for the uh, you know the photo of the guts there was it didn't exactly unscrew and screw back together super smoothly and I'm assuming that's maybe part of the reason for the change in axle from the prototype to the production run. The main benefit of including a longer axle, of course, is that it reduces the chances that the yo-yo will strip. After talking with our favorite guy with a yo-yo a little bit, it seems like maybe some of the screwing and unscrewing issues have to do with uh, the initial measurements for the bearing seat and all that, you know, adding a little bit to it. So I think there's some adjustments that are being made to that that would, I think, make the yo-yo screw together and unscrew uh, a little bit more smoothly. It can handle my tricks, my combos pretty well. It's uh, a fairly quick stable yo-yo with some power and certainly you know if you push it uh, it does have some speed i'm not the fastest player but i've been impressed by just how quickly it can play how nimble it can be but also it still has some oomph to it in terms of the spin time and all that uh, the finish is nice uh, i like it for uh, finger grinds. Uh, maybe the shape doesn't make it ideal for doing especially a long uh, finger grinds but you can do them Thumb grinds are really, really easy on the saboteur. The lip and the cup that comes down isn't the most pronounced I've seen on a yo-yo for thumb grinds, but there is a little bit of a one. And there is a lot of room inside the cup itself that you should have no problem locking your thumb in for a long grind. The response was a little bit slippy when I use my standard string, which is the Bad Wolf Co. Slicks and the regular thickness. Uh, it wasn't particularly bad, but especially when I got into what I call fancier binds, flyaways and stuff like that, it was a little hit or miss. And uh, in talking with Guy with the Yo-Yo, uh, that is my understanding for 
why he's trimming the gap down just a little bit for the production run. It plays just fine with Bad Wolf Co. Uh, regular thickness of the poly nylon blinds. It's my understanding that's what the yo-yo is going to ship with anyway, and that's what I've been using mainly on this, and it's in my book perfect. And finally one has to tip his cap to the uh, aesthetics of the yo-yo as the cup design in particular is pretty cool with the swirl sort of design and then the small spike in the center. So my verdict with a uh, guy with the yo-yo's very first release, the Saboteur, he's hit the nail on the head. I thought that he did a wonderful job of making a sort of classic-ish feel yo-yo with modern performance attributes. Uh, this, along with the Sistine, has really gone a long ways to sort of challenge my overall feeling about organics, where I, I just hadn't found a lot that I particularly loved, and now we've had in a short period of time a couple that I really, really like. So I love it. I'm really excited to see how the community receives it. So as always, appreciate you watching. I'll catch you next time.